Good morning, children. Happy New Year and a happy Sunday to you all. How was your Christmas and New Year's holiday? I'm sure you all had an amazing time. Welcome to church. This is Auntie Shadi here, and we'll be sharing this Sunday together. Okay? All right. So today, we will try to wrap up our final part of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we'll be looking at the speaking gifts, the speaking gifts. Before we do that, let's quickly get up, shake your body, and let's recite and confess our identity. Are we ready to go? All right, get up, get up, let's go. I am fearfully made. I am wonderfully made. I know my identity. I am a child of God. I am creative and full of ideas. I am not a slave to fear. I am bold. I am a soldier in the Lord's army. And I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Wonderful. Now, let's do a little recap on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We told you, or we taught you, that there were nine of them, okay? And these nine gifts, we put them in three categories. We divided them into three sections. The first are revelation gifts, which includes word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and discerning of spirits. These are the gifts that the Holy Ghost gives us to know what is to come in the future. It shows the things that are going to happen in the future to us, and it helps us to discern right from wrong. Remember that? Good. Then we also taught you about the power gifts, which includes gifts of healings, working of miracles, and faith. Today, we are looking at the speaking gifts. The speaking gifts includes prophecy, which are inspired utterances, different kinds of tongues, and then interpretation of tongues. Let's look at this more closely. In Mark chapter 16, verse 17, we are told that speaking in tongues is one of the signs of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so let's open our Bibles. This year, we will be opening our Bible a lot during the service. So always have your Bibles beside you. Okay? Okay. So let's look at Mark chapter 16 and we will start reading from verse 15. It says, He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. Listen, verse 17. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. Absolutely wonderful. Can you see that? They will speak in new tongues. Let's also look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 27 to 28. Now open your Bibles, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and we'll look at verse 27 and 28. As I said, we'll be looking at our Bibles a lot and opening it together. Let's go. Are you there? 1 Corinthians Chapter 14, verses 27 and 28. It says, If anyone speaks in a tongue, two or at the most three should speak one at a time, and someone must interpret. If there's no interpreter, the speaker should keep quiet in the church and speak to himself and to God. All right. Now, this Bible verse tells us that it is important to have someone speak in tongues and someone also interpret. Do you get that? So that we will understand what is being said. Now, do you remember any story in the Bible where the disciples of Jesus had the gift of speaking 
in tongues? Do you remember? Okay. If not, we're going to go back to that story this morning. All right? Now, I want you all to open your Bibles again to Acts chapter 1. The book of Acts is in the New Testament. Okay? So let's quickly open the book of Acts and we will start from chapter 1. All right? Okay. Open it quickly. Now, Acts chapter 1 talks about the story of Jesus going back to heaven after he resurrected. Okay? And then he instructed his disciples to wait in Jerusalem where the Holy Spirit will come upon them as he has promised. Okay, so I want us to read together from Acts chapter 1. Okay, now, Jesus said to them, from verse 4, On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. That was the promise. Okay, so let's scroll down. Let's scroll down to verse 13 okay, of Acts chapter 1. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those that were there were Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, all the, all the disciples were there. And they all joined together constantly in prayer along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers were also there. So all of them were there. They were all together in the upper room, okay, waiting and praying, all right? Now, then on the day of Pentecost, as they gathered in the upper room, a sound came from heaven as of a mighty, rushing, rushing, mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were all sitting. And guess what happened? Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire. And it sat on each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak with other tongues. Now I want us to go into the Bible again and look at Acts chapter 2. It's the next chapter. Acts chapter 2. And we will start reading together from verse 1. Okay? So we can see that this story happened in the Bible. Now let's go. Acts chapter 2 verse 1. It says, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. And then suddenly, a sound that the blowing of a mighty rushing wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Okay, that is that story. I want to read from the New King James Version as well. Let's go. This is from the New King James Version. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire. And one sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amazing, amazing. And that was the first time the disciples received the gift of the Holy Spirit and then they started speaking in tongues. 
every one of them. Now, let's quickly have a recap of the story. You too can also speak in tongues if you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay? You can ask the Holy Spirit to give you the gift of speaking in tongues and he will. Because speaking in tongues is a gift. is a gift from God. And when God gives you a gift, what do you do? You receive it. And then you use it. Speaking in tongues is a gift. And it's also a tool and a weapon of warfare. Which means we pray when we speak in tongues. We also worship and praise God when we speak in tongues. Remember, when you are given a gift, you are meant to use it. Okay? So, praying in tongues is very, very valuable. Okay? So, we are going to pray now before we go to receive, you know, the Holy Ghost gift of speaking in tongues. All right? Now, before we pray, let's quickly look at our memory verse for today. Our memory verse for today is from the same chapter of Mark 16 and verse 17, which we read earlier on. So write it down. Mark 16, verse 17. And let's read it together. And these signs follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. Can we read this together again one more time? One, two, let's go. Our memory verse is from Mark chapter 16, verse 17. What does he say? And these signs follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demon. They will speak with new tongues. I hope you've written that in your journal so that you can go back to it and memorize it. Okay? Let us pray, children. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you for the gift of speaking in tongues when we believe and we receive the Holy Spirit. So this morning, as many of us children that want to receive the gift of speaking in tongues, Father, we ask that you bless us with it and we receive this by faith in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful. And that brings us to the end of today's service. I look forward to being here again with you next week. Have a wonderful, wonderful week and do stay strong. I love you. Bye-bye. Stories of the Bible. God sends the Holy Spirit. These are the apostles. Hello. They followed Jesus during his time on earth. Before Jesus went to heaven, he told them to stay in Jerusalem until God sent the gift he promised. See ya! So after Jesus went to heaven, the apostles stayed in Jerusalem along with the other people who believed in Jesus. One day they were all gathered together when there was a sound from heaven like a mighty windstorm. Whoa! Then what looked like flames appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gave them the ability to speak in other languages, and so they started speaking. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, they came running to see what it was. What's going on? When they saw the believers speaking in their own languages, they were shocked and amazed. Hey, Jesus! They wondered, how can this be? These people are from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages about the wonderful things God has done. What can this mean? Nah, whatever. But others in the crowd didn't believe that it was really a miracle and thought the believers were just acting oddly. Nah. Then Peter stepped forward and shouted to the crowd, Hey, all you! Listen carefully, all you! He told them that they were not acting strangely, but that this was from God. He reminded them that God said this would happen long ago. Then Peter told them about how Jesus was crucified, but then raised to life again, just as God had said he would be. He told them that Jesus was now in heaven and that God had given the Holy Spirit to them as he had promised. 
Peter's words changed what the people thought and felt, and they asked, Brothers, what should we do? Peter told them, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Wow! Peter continued to preach to the crowd for a long time, and those who believed what Peter said were baptized. 3,000 people were baptized and added to the church that day. Then all the believers listened to the apostles' teaching and practiced what they taught. Hey! They met together in fellowship, shared meals, and prayed together. They were amazed as the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. All the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. Here you go. Take this. Ah, oh, thank you. They helped those in need. Here, this is for you. Thank you. Worshiped together at the temple every day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy all while praising God and enjoying each other. And each day, God added to their fellowship those who were being saved. And all the 